doing some stuff with Kepler's laws. Uh, I did. I showed how Kepler's first, second, and third law agree with Newtonian mechanics. And that was kind of fun. I had fun. Made it in Python. Um, I'll link those down below. Check them out. But now what I want to do is to model the motion of a planet orbiting a star or the sun, whatever you like, uh, and use polar coordinates. And this turns out to be quite useful in a lot of different ways. So let's just talk about number one, polar coordinates. So in polar coordinates, uh, we represent the location of an object with the variables r and theta. So theta is measured from the x-axis. You can use phi if you like. I'm going to use theta. And r is the distance from the origin to that point. And we're going to put the star at the origin, just so you know. Now, the thing about polar coordinates and vectors in polar coordinates is that I have unit vectors r hat and theta hat. So r hat is the direction of changing r. Theta hat's the direction of changing theta. Uh, and as the object moves to different locations, r hat and theta hat change. So r hat and theta hat are not constant. And so when you take derivatives, if I take the time derivative of, of the r, the position vector, the position vector is just the, the variable r, r hat, right? It's in the r hat direction. I get a more complicated expression because I have to take the derivatives of unit vectors. Now, so I'm going to tell you these things. I derive uh, the acceleration and polar coordinates in another video. I'm not going to do that here. But if you take the derivative of the position to get velocity, you get r dot, and let me just say r dot is dr dt. So we use this dot notation. r double dot is the second derivative. So the r dot, and that's the r coordinate. Don't confuse that with the r vector. r dot r hat plus r theta dot theta hat. That's my velocity. And then I take the derivative again, and I get this, r double dot, the second derivative of the position r, minus r theta dot squared r hat plus 2 r dot theta dot plus r theta dot double dot theta hat. Now, if I want to model the motion using polar coordinates, I have this is my force. And this is what's so great about this. My gravitational force is towards the origin. So it's in the negative r hat direction. So it's the gravitational force is negative g constant, mass of the star, that's big M, mass of the planet little m over r squared, then that is my variable r, right? So I don't have a theta hat force. So now if I use Newton's second law, I can break it into a theta hat and an r hat direction. So I can say fr is going to be equal to this force, that's my r component of the force, negative g, big M, little m, over r squared, and that's going to be equal to the mass of the planet, little m, times the acceleration, but the acceleration is r double dot minus r theta dot squared. And the mass cancels. And I can solve this for, I'm going to go ahead and solve this for r double dot. That's what I'm going to need. Okay, I'm going to need r double dot, the r acceleration. So if I add that term to both sides, I get r double dot equals r theta dot squared, if I add it to both sides, minus g m over r squared. That's important. Now I can do the same thing for the theta hat force, right? f theta is zero. There's no force in the theta hat direction. That's an f. So, but it's still equal to mass times acceleration, which is 2 r dot theta dot plus r theta double dot. And here, I can solve for theta double dot. So I'm going to divide both sides by m so it cancels. And I get theta double dot equals negative 2 r dot theta dot. And that's to divide by r. So now I have two differential equations. I have a differential equation for r double dot. I have a differential equation for theta double dot. Now, if I know at some point, if I know... Uh, r at time t equals zero. I know uh, r dot at time t equals zero. I know theta. I know theta dot. Then I can solve for this using a numerical calculation. So here's how we're going to do that. And so I've done this in all my other videos too. So let's just recopy uh, these two equations. So I have r double dot equals r theta dot squared minus g m over r squared. And then I have theta double dot 
equals negative 2 r dot theta dot over r. So let's start with the r double dot first. So if I break this into small time intervals, delta t equals small, and small depends on the kind of motion that you have. Uh, if I'm looking at the Earth orbiting the sun, you know, an hour is a small time interval. Uh, but I'm actually going to cheat. I'm going to use other units. If that's true, I can assume r double dot's constant. So I can write r double dot is delta r dot over delta t. It's the rate of change of r dot with respect to time. But I'm going to assume delta t is some small time interval, and I can use a difference. So I can write this as r2 dot minus r1 dot over delta t. So r1 dot is the radial velocity at the beginning of the time interval, and r2 is at the end. So if I know the beginning, like the initial conditions for my first time interval, I can solve for r2 dot. I get r2 dot equals r1 dot plus r double dot delta t. And I can solve for r double dot right here. So that's important. This is important. Okay, now I need to find r. I can do the same thing. I can assume r, do, r dot's constant. So r2 dot is delta r over delta t. And I know you, no, that's not an r. That's just r. That's just a, the, con, the variable r. And so this is going to be r2 minus r1 over delta t. And again, I'm, you're thinking, hey, but we just solved for r2 dot. r dot is obviously not constant. But just, it works, trust me. So now if I solve this for r2, I get r2 equals r1 plus r2 dot delta t. And so I have r2 dot because I just solve for r2. That's important. So you see how I can solve the r motion here. I, I use the differential equation to get a value for r double dot. I use my initial conditions, r1, uh, to find the r1 dot to find r2 dot. And I do the same thing, my initial position to find the next position. Then I can just do this all over again. Now, this does depend on theta dot, so I, the differential equation depends on theta dot. I need to know that too. Now we can do the same thing for theta double dot. I can say theta double dot is delta theta dot over delta t. And from that, I get theta two dot equals theta one dot plus theta double dot delta t. And I can solve for theta double dot from my equation up here. And then I can say theta 2 dot is delta theta over delta t. And from that, I get theta 2 equals theta 1 plus theta 2 dot delta t. So there's two more. So here's the plan. Number one, calculate r double dot. Number two, calculate theta 2 double dot. Then update r2 dot update r dot, update theta dot, and then update r2 and theta2. And so you'll notice this does depend on r. So all these things are going to change. And that just does it for one short time interval. Then I just need to do it again and again. Okay, so I've already made a program like this using Cartesian coordinates. So I already have an orbit. So I'm going to make two stars. One is going to be my old method with Cartesian coordinates, and one's going to be this. But then this way I can plot certain things um, and like angular momentum in polar coordinates, which is just r theta dot, or r squared theta dot, um, where that's related to that. And we can see that it's conserved. Okay, so I already have a Python program started, so let's jump over here and look at that. So this is my Cartesian coordinate uh, program. So let me just go over what's here. Um, so the one thing I did was um, make I don't know why I put that. That's weird. Uh, the mass doesn't matter anyway. Um, I'm going to use just a different system of units so that the numbers look nice. I'm going to use G as 1, M as 1, R1 as 1, V1 is, I just picked, I'm, I want to put this at 0.7. I had 0.7. I think I like that orbit. And then I have the sun. I have the planet. Um, and they're just objects that orbit. And I print some stuff. And then here I, I calculate the, the position between the two, use that to calculate the force, update the momentum, update the position. Let's just run this real quick, and then we're going to add a second, we're going to add a second planet. So you can see it looks like it's orbiting just fine, and that's cool. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is down here, I want to use the variable r 
but I already have R down here. So let's call this RR. I don't need to print that. I don't need this. And I want to call this RR. Oops, not RF. RR. Um, this is going to be RR. It's a vector for the, for the Cartesian calculation. And that should be fine. Let's just run it to make sure it works because you just never know. Okay, it looks like it's working. Okay, now I'm going to add my second planet. I'm going to call it planet 2. Does that make sense? Planet 2. It's also going to be a sphere. Let's go up here, actually. So if you'll notice in my code, let me look. I start over here on the x-axis with the velocity and the y-axis. So I want to have this planet 2 have the same values, but I want to do it in terms of polar coordinates. So I'm going to say r is equal to r1. So r1 is the starting position on the x-axis. Theta is equal to what? Well, theta is equal to, if I use my, uh, car, my normal polar coordinates, I'm on the x-axis, so theta would be 0. Now I also need r dot and I need theta dot. So r dot, I'll call it this, is just going to be zero, right? If it's moving this way, it's not moving towards or away from the origin. And that's what's nice about that starting position. I have an easy r dot. What about theta dot? That's the angular velocity, right? So theta dot is going to be equal to the, vol the linear velocity, which I'm calling v1, divided by r1. So it's just going to be v1 divided by r1. So now I have my initial conditions. I have my initial r, my initial theta, r dot, theta dot. Now I can make my planet, because I need those r's. It's a sphere. Its position is going to be equal to r times vector cosine theta sine theta 0. Right. So it's. I, I know I could just put my values there, but I, I want to do it in terms of my polar coordinates. I just think that's fun. It's going to have the same radius, radius equals 0 0.01, and let's make it color equals color dot yellow, just so it shows up, and then make trail equals true. Uh, let's go up here to my planet 1, and I'm going to make this opacity equals 0 0.5, so it'll, it'll, be, it'll be kind of faded out, so we can focus on our better planet. Um, let's just run this right now because I, it, it's not moving the planet, but let's just make sure the planet's there because you want to do it that way. See? No, I did. Okay, there's my, so you see there's my other planet, my yellow planet, and that one moves. Okay. So I still ha I already have dt, I have r. Uh, all I need to do is to calculate my other variable. So I'm going to say I need to calculate r double dot. So I'm going to call that r d d dot for double dot. And I'm looking at my equation right now. It is r times theta dot squared minus g times m over r squared. And remember, this r is a, is a scalar value. It's, the, it's, the, it's, the, it's like x in Cartesian coordinates. It's not a vector. Okay. Now I'm going to calculate theta dot, theta double dot, theta d dot is going to be equal to negative 2 times r dot times theta dot divided by r. And again, I know r dot, right? Because when this loop gets here, I've already started with an r dot. I have a value for r dot. Now I can update r dot using r double dot. So r dot equals r dot plus r double dot times dt. Update theta dot. Theta dot equals theta dot plus theta double dot times gt. Now I'm going to update r. r equals r plus r dot times gt. Now I'm going to update theta. Theta equals theta plus theta dot times gt. So now I've updated everything. Um, all I need to do is move my planet. So I actually can do this. I'm going to copy this code right there. So that is planet two. Okay. So down here, I'm going to say planet two dot pos equals. I'll get rid of that. So I'm going to. I know my r variable. I know my theta variable. I can just put the planet there. So I'm not. It's a little bit different than the motion for planet one, right? 
Uh, and then I update time and I do the whole thing over again. What do you think? Do you think this is going to work? I'm not 100% sure. Could have easily made an error. I make errors. Everyone makes mistakes. Okay, let's just run it. See what happens. Okay, there you go. See, there's my yellow planet and my cyan planet right next to each other. A little bit different. You'll notice that they don't quite give the same thing. That's strange. Okay, let's make a smaller time interval. We'll see if that fixes it. Make a smaller time step. Oh, I need to increase this. Let's make this uh, 2,000. Run it in double speed. I'm so impatient. I can't handle that. Okay, it did deviate still. I think it's okay. I think it's okay. Um, it's just a time difference. Let's just make that one more thing smaller and make that one thing bigger. Okay. Yeah. So you see in this particular case, my Cartesian coordinate version uh, seems to work much better. Uh, it should get back to the same position. Uh, and, and if I have too large of a time step with my, uh, with my polar coordinate version, then it doesn't work. Okay, let's make a graph. Uh, let's make a graph of R and theta versus time just for fun. And then I'll make a, another graph. So I'm going to go up here, make a graph. G1 equals graph. Uh, X title equals time. And, and no units because it's not seconds. Uh, y title is equal to uh, R. And then uh, width is 500. Height, let's do, is 150. And then I'm going to say fr equals g curve color equals color dot blue and now my if you if you want to make two graphs if you uh you can assign the graph a, a curve to a graph but if you just put them in order it'll work too so i'm gonna say g2 equals i'm gonna copy this i made it nice and skinny so that they don't top each other and there's gonna be theta and then we'll call this f theta g curve color equals color dot red. Okay, now down here, I'm going to plot that. So I'm going to plot it after the time. fr dot plot t r. That's it. f theta dot plot t theta. Let's see if that works. It's slow. Where's your other theta? Okay, so there's my r. Did it Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. So now the, the thing is going to keep increasing because it goes around. Um, I, and that's fine, right? I keep increasing theta. I don't loop it back around just because of the way I did it. Uh, let's go ahead. And that, that looks pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's plot the angular momentum in polar coordinates is going to be mass. Think about it this way. It's the moment of inertia for a point, which is mR squared, uh, and then multiply by the angular velocity. It's it's I omega, so that's going to be M R squared theta dot. So let's not worry about the mass. Let's just plot uh, the angular momentum per mass, which is uh, R squared theta dot. So I'm going to change my graph. Uh, let's get rid of that second graph. Let's just not plot it at all. And let's change this one to 250 and T versus L, lowercase l. And let's call this FL. Never do that. Because that's that's a mistake you'll never cover, recover from, using an L instead of a 1. So down here, I'm not going to do F theta. I'm not going to plot that. And this is F1. And it's T R squared times theta dot. And that should be constant. Okay, and you'll say, oh, look, physics doesn't work. It's not constant, but it is constant. Look at this, it's 0.7 down to some value over here, 0.6695. It's, it's constant, just the graph just auto-scaled so you can see any small changes in it uh, just due to rounding errors and stuff like that. Okay, so that's that. Uh, link to the code down below. Uh, my Kepler first, second, third law, uh, video will be down below also if you want to see them. Hopefully that helps. I'll talk to you later.